I'm in Holcomb, ahead of the Outlaw Half Ironman. This is the backyard for pro triathlete Kim Morrison. Now, Kim is known for being an incredibly strong bike rider. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to find out just how and why she's so strong on the bike and what tips she can share with us. Kim, thanks to start with for joining us and for bringing your bike along, which is great, just ahead of your race. And as we're in a race setting, I thought the perfect place to start would be how you actually adapt your bike according to the race you're doing. So we're here in Outlaw in the UK. The weather's not going to be that great. I know you're already adapting a couple of things from what we see here now, but if you can just talk through what different things you change on your bike race to race. Yeah, so I think the main change is certainly the tyres. Um, I will, as you can see here now, we've got the Schwab Pro 1TT tyres on. I would say these are for a really nice road surface. Okay. PTO London is a great example. Just a few weeks ago, Dorney Lake, we were up and down, super smooth, super nice. Yeah. Here at home, Outlaw Holcomb, we've got country roads, we've got newly surfaced roads. Oh, okay. We've got some fast A roads, but the mix just means I want a little bit of extra protection. Yeah. So we'll be going for GP5000. So okay. yeah, one of the big ones is the tyre choice. And what about the pressure of your tyres? Do you change that according to the road surface? Yeah, tyre pressure, we take a little out, um, depending on road surface, but also if there's wet on the road. So if there's wet on the road, we will also take a little bit of pressure out just to give a little bit more grip. So for example, tomorrow, what sort of pressure will you be? About 90 PSI. Okay, and wheel choice. Obviously you've got the disc wheel on, now you've got the 7.8 on the front. How, do you change your wheels according to the weather and things? Yeah, so we have a set of MV training wheels. That's what's usually on the time trial bike for the training miles. Race setup, this is pretty much it. The only change we'll make is for something like Ironman World Championships, Kona Hawaii, disc yeah. isn't allowed, so yeah. then we put a rear. Okay. Similar to the front, we may go a little bit deeper. Yeah. And um, hydration, you've got so many options with this bike. Do you, do you always have what you have now with a single bottle cage here? You've obviously got your gel and your hydration there and hydration inbuilt. Do you change that at all? So this is pretty much a setup set for 70.3 racing and yeah. Ironman racing. Um, Ironman just means I'll double concentrate the back bottle, yeah. then goes into the front, grab a bottle, dilute. For time trials though, yeah. strip it back. We don't have the elite bottle, we don't have the cage, we don't have the rear cage. So the bike just looks a lot, lot smoother and we just don't need the fuel. So. Okay, and but obviously you couldn't do a UCI legal race on this bike, could you? Because there's still certain things that make it not. Exactly correct. Cycling time trials, this bike is fine. Yeah. British cycling, You're where fine. UCI yeah. legals come in, UCI rules come in, okay. not fine. Okay, so you can only do certain time trials on this exactly. bike. Exactly, so I haven't raced any British cycling time trials as yet, but if I was to, I'd have to revert back to the Scott Plasma okay. 5. Interesting. And as we're talking about racing and all the changes you make, obviously to know those changes, you've got to have had a look at the course and know what you're racing. When you enter a race, and if it's say, obviously here, this is your backyard, you know it, but if you didn't know the course, what sort of things are you looking at when you're doing your race prep plan? Ironman Tulsa is a great example. Um, nobody had raced an Ironman there. There had been a triathlon there, but not an Ironman branded, so very difficult to find out some information. Yeah. Uh, needed a little bit of local knowledge. But you ask the right people and you, you find the answers. And we were told road surface is really quite sketchy. Okay. So I, and, and was it? It really was. So yeah. again, Ironman Tulsa, I chose the safe option and went for Continental yeah. 5000s. And when it comes to your actual race plan, so you know, if you're, say, an age group and you're entering a race you've not done before, and you get the profile and you get the weather, and you, how do you, do you personally adapt your, the way you actually ride the course according to how hilly it is or um, you know, the pacing of it? How do you approach that sort of breakdown? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's two important points there. One is, are you riding with power? If you are, a hilly course, much more sensible to look at normalized power. Yeah. If you're riding a flat course, really great to have like average five second, average 20 second power, keeping that as consistent as possible. If you're not, and you're just riding with speed, time, perhaps you have a heart rate monitor yeah. on, I would say on the climbs, you really don't want to be burning through too many matches, right? Mm. So you want to almost set yourself a ceiling. Yeah, a cap, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, yeah, very wise words. And, you know, Kim, you are known for being incredibly strong on the bike. That's, you know, your, your best discipline. So I want to take advantage of that and ask if you've got any tips that you can give me and our viewers on how to race and how to train for to improve your bike. And this is a pretty pretty generic one there. Let's start with training. What what training tips have you got for us? Yeah, so I love riding my bike and I think that's why a strength shows through. Um, my first bit of advice to anyone is get as much of yourself out of the way as possible because okay. we're moving through the air, right? So, yeah. so hide, get small, tuck in. Worry about that yourself before any components exactly. on the bike. Exactly, and you can do that for free, can't you? Change exactly. your position within reason. So. Exactly. And also enjoy bike miles. I think if you enjoy riding your bike, mm. you'll enjoy riding it more. You'll enjoy riding it faster. Yeah. The more miles you pop, put in, the more aero miles you pop in, the more comfortable you'll be in race position. So yeah. I spend a lot of time on this bike all year round, dialing in the position and practice, practicing riding fast too. Okay. Because some people forget there's an art to riding fast. Yeah especially when the course is flat. And me being a, a time trial lover, I do practice riding fast frequently. Nice. And you say all year round. Does that mean you take this beautiful bike out on the roads in the winter? I do. I do. It's, um, yeah, it goes through a lot, but it gets a lot of TLC and a lot of, uh, lot of cleaning time. Yeah, I bet. And, you know, time trialing is something that's such a, a mental kind of challenge as much as a physical challenge. Have you got any tips on how you approach that kind of, you're pushing your body to the limits when you're in that position on the bike. Time trials are an art in themselves, aren't they? I mean, it's a wonderful sport. It really feels like you've gone back in time when you stand on a time trial start line. Um, you pin the number on, you have carrots, but it's just you. When I say carrots, I mean you have the other riders a minute ahead. Yeah, you, don't, you don't eat carrots, <laughs> just in case anyone's <laughs> confused on that one. But the sport of time trialling, it's just you against the clock. Yeah. You're not racing anyone else, you're racing yourself. So. There's a, a real fine, beautiful thing about time trialing, and it really is about just zoning into yourself, which I think is why. This and do you think that happened. helps you a lot with your triathlon, the bike leg, doing your time trials? Do they Abs complement? Absolutely. I think it really dials in the position. I mean, do I cycle too ambitiously when I'm doing a triathlon? People will say, yes, she does. <laughs> um, I cycle and I, you know, I'm sort of optimizing my strengths as, as much as possible. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can tell your passion from the bike and everything, but and I'm sure you've got so many sessions you love. But final question, could you share a sort of a key session that A, you love, that you think our viewers would love equally and would get a lot out of? Um, I'd like to share two. Oh, even better. Because British Cycling have a great one and it's easy for anyone to access. It's called Russian Steps. Um, it's great to do on the indoor trainer. You're just ramping up and you're ramping back down. The level of intensity um, stays the same, but the frequency increases. Okay. So you're playing about with a pyramid. So British Cycling Russian Steps is a great one. A firm favourite of mine is an overgeared session. I so it we're might be. Okay. pushing the pedals nice and slow, but producing a lot of power. Okay. Six lots of one minute with one minute 90 RPM, RPM being the cadence. Yeah recovery in between, a couple of sets of that, that can sharpen you up well okay. ahead of a race. And that's one that um, Daniela Reese is known for doing quite a lot of overgear work as well, isn't she? She so is, yeah, exactly. Interesting. It's a, yeah, a, a painful one, but uh, effective, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, don't pop your knees out when you try that one. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> You've just now maybe everyone go, maybe we won't do that <laughs> session. <laughs> well, brilliant. Thank you so much for those tips, and yeah, I hope you have a great race. Thank you.